Alright guys, so you're here, and I am here with another, and I mean another, uh, graphic novel trade, whatever you want to call it, uh, going through my collection of trades. I do have a pretty big collection of trades. Uh, done, did like two videos, this will be the third one. There's probably like two or three more left before I get done, because I, I don't want to like, I don't want to bombard you with like a two hour video, so I try to break it down. But first off, we have a couple books by, um, published by Dynamic. Uh, which is a company that's you know they're rising up. They they do a lot of pub, they do a lot of licensed material like you know like say Green Hornet and um, you know Conan the Barbarian and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know movie stuff like Dracula and um, there was one I saw the other day. What was it? It's in this hall somewhere. Oh, they do like Grimm graphic novels, the TV show Grimm. So yeah, they do a lot of licensed stuff. Um, but they also do. And Alex Ross is like a main person. I don't know if he I don't know if he's like really in charge of the company or anything, but he's like a big face of the company. And um, he started doing this thing like when the company first started, they they basically took a whole bunch of public domain characters, which if you don't know what public domain means, it basically means uh, material licensed materials or like properties, stories, whatever you want to call it, songs, anything can be licensed, anything can be free domain pretty much. But free domain basically means that it's a property or a licensed material that has been out of circulation for so many years that no one owns it anymore. Like the, the, the previous owner either didn't keep up with it legally or they passed away or something. Um, so and usually it has to be like 50 or plus years before it becomes public domain. That's why a lot of times in old Looney Tune cartoons, you always saw them playing like really old, even for Looney Tunes, they play really old like Arsicle music. Or classical music. That's because that music was free domain at the time, so they could use it. Um, so here we have uh, Miss Fury, which is Alex Ross. He took a bunch of characters that were public domain. He basically rewrote them, kind of get, flushed them out, gave them. There were a bunch of them. They're mostly old Golden Age heroes. They really didn't have anything going for them. He took these characters, gave them really nice artwork, like he always does, and he basically flushed them out, gave them like some backstory, you know character development and all that so this one is Miss Fury she's basically kinda of like an old school female superhero from the golden age that really never got anywhere um, you, you can see it's not actually Alex Ross art inside but it's got a pretty cool cover by Alex Ross then we have another one that is called um, the Pro Project Superpowers I really like this one because this one is basically like this one's basically all the major all the major heroes of, the, of that, of that storyline of that like public domain, you know, characters, and they're all thrown together in one book that's basically like a, like a story, you know, like all of them together, and it's really interesting, and I'm going to tell you something right now, when I was younger, I probably like 10 years before this book even came out, I had uh, pitched the idea to my brother, who's, you know, a big comic book nerd, and I, you know, I used to like, I used to like to write stories and stuff, and I'd always, I'd always write up little, little stories, little fanfic kind of things, and I, I pitched him an idea one time, I was like, wouldn't it be really cool if you had like a story? And I, and in my in my mind, I had all the, the the DC Golden Age heroes in my mind. Like, wouldn't it be really cool if like some villain was able to trap all the Golden Age heroes inside of like a lamp or something? I think I had like a genie's lamp, which that was my idea, and uh, or a cube or something. I don't remember. But uh, if if the villain could trap all the heroes inside that cube, and then for like next 20, 30 years, the Nazis won. They took over in the World War Two because there was no heroes to get in their way, and it was all you know tragic and apocalyptic kind of story and then one day somebody just stumbled upon the lamp or whatever and they were able to free the heroes and they had to basically fight to take back their country in a, a modern era that had lost them you know that they were never around to help fight for um well apparently alex ross and whoever the writer for this is or whoever the creative team for this is they were able to pick my mind as a kid and took this story and just ran with it because I swear that's what this story is. I don't know if it's in this is this is chapter two, so that might not be in chapter two, but chapter one definitely that's the story. It's like all these Golden Age heroes got captured by some kind of villain. He put him out. He trapped him in like a prison that was like a little cube or something like that. And um, basically they get free and they have to basically fight back. And that's that's the story. Like it's you know it's not tick for tick my story, but it's got strong similarities. Now obviously I can't you know I didn't I never published it or nothing. It's all in my mind, so I can't really you know, prove it or anything. I don't really want to. It's, you know, but it's just cool that somebody, that somebody as well known as that creative team that's like in actual comic books 
had made something that I came up with, you know, like that I had an idea for. It's cool that we, that me and professional comic book writers can have the same brain waves, if you know what I mean. So that was pretty cool. I like, I've always looked back at that and thought it was cool. Um, it's also, you know, it's also kind of a cautionary tale. If you got a cool idea, write it down, publish it, or at least write it down and like show people that you actually wrote it when you wrote it. Um, okay. So Green Hornet, another dynamic book, basically just the stories of the Green Hornet, you know, old school character. Everybody loves him. Everybody loves the 60s TV show. Um, we have this book. I don't know what this is. So just boop. It's over there. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I have a few graphic novels. I, I never read them. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they're about. Because I used to have this uh, service called Comic Burrito or Bento or something like that. And basically, it was a subscription service. You pay like, I think, $25 a month. And they would send you like between four and like six graphic novels every month. They usually sent you like first volumes or like, you know, the beginnings of a new character or whatever. So you can just jump into it. But a lot of times it was like, sometimes you got Marvel and DC characters. A lot of times you got Valiant characters or these like, even, or these even lower companies like such as Dynamic and, you know, stuff like that. You've got these like co comics nobody's ever heard of. So it's not really the best service in the world. But if you want free, if you want like a good deal on trades, I guess it's not that bad. And if you want a lot of weird and fringe stuff to read, it's not that bad. Um, Grim, another uh, dynamic trade. A lot of these dynamic trades come straight from those subscription boxes, just to let you know. Uh, another one that came from the description box, Vampirella. I've never been a big fan of this character, and honestly, I don't, I don't see what the appeal is. I know I'm going to get some flack for that, because I've, I've never been a fan of her or Lady Death. I don't know why people like this character so much. I mean, I can probably guess two big reasons why, but other than that, I can't really think of any reasons why. <laughs> Um, we have Terminator Revolution. This is another dynamic book. Man, a lot of dynamic books. I didn't realize there was that many in this pile. Um, then we have Why, The Last Man. This is actually a cleanly claimed book that came out many, some years ago. Um, it's a vertical book, which is an imprint of DC Comics. And basically it's a story about like a plague or something like that that kills off all the men in the world except for this one guy, Why. I don't know if his actual name is Y, but um, it's, there's basically one guy left, and he's pretty young. He's like a teenager or, so, or something. Well, I don't know if he's a teenager. He's like a young, he's like a young adult. And um, he's the only guy left in the world. The world is like ran by mostly you know women, you know, because that's all that's left. Uh, there's a lot of lesbians because you know obviously women gotta love somebody, and there's no guys around. I mean, boom. Uh, so yeah. As you can probably already figure, there's, there's a lot of sex in that that comic. There's a lot of like sexual overtones, you know. It's but it is interesting. It's a post-apocalyptic story, you know, about like women and stuff, and how how a guy would how the one last guy in the world perceives the world that no longer has his race in, or his people in, you know, whatever. It's an interesting book. Check it out. Um, next up, we have Uncanny. Don't know what this is about, but boom, it's over there. Um, then we have Quantum and Louie. That we have volumes is volume what volume one and volume two. Uh, pretty cool little uh, valiant comic. It's basically a uh, buddy kind of a buddy cop buddy well, buddy superhero story about two half brothers. One is a uh, one grows up to be like a military you know kind of really smart military grade fighter guy who work you know, works in the military. The other one grows up to be a con artist um, you know kind of a thief character. And they're both they're both drawn back to each other. They you know they've come they've been very far apart from each other, but they eventually come back to each other after their after their dad's death. Well, Wooey's stepdad, but Quantum's real dad. After their dad's death, uh, under under some very suspicious circumstances, they start investigating it. They find this device that their dad was working on because their dad was a scientist, and it's like a bracelet. But it's two bracelets, but each one of them gets a bracelet on them and it locks onto them. And each one of them has a different kind of power, but they can only really use the power when they're in close proximity to each other. So it's a really interesting dynamic of how these two guys that really hate each other get brought together by several different methods, and they have to work together in order to because they can only use their powers when they're like when they shack together. It's really it's, it's kind of silly, but uh, basically Wooly, who's the white guy, he has the power to shoot energy out of his hands. Quantum, who's the black guy, he has the ability to make like projectile shields and such. So basically, one's defensive, one's offensive. It's a really interesting concept. Check it out. Hit list. Don't know what that's about. I'm sure it's about some people that are on the hit list or going to shoot, killing people. Don't know what that's about either. 
uh, just random shit that gets sent to me. Then we have uh, the Amazing Spider-Man, the Saga of the Alien Costume. It's pretty cool back cover. It just collects a whole bunch of random like stories of the co the black costume and all that. Uh, hmm. I had a magic card randomly in here. I guess that was my uh, I guess that was my bookmark. <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess that's how far I got in the book. Whenever I was reading this. And then you just love when you find random bookmarks. They're not even really bookmarks. So yeah, classic Spider-Man stories. Uh, then we have the Dark Horse Book of Monsters. This is really cool. It's got a nice hardback cover. Really cool art. Got some kind of uh, HP Lovecraft inspired looking cover here. I say that because it's tentacles. Anytime I see tentacles, I either think of HP Lovecraft or hentai. And I'd rather talk about HP Lovecraft in this video. So, uh, yeah. Pretty cool little book. Basically going over a bunch of different random monster stories by Dark Horse. And then we have... Um, the collection of Deadshot Beginnings. This is a collection of Deadshot's so, uh, solo series he had for a while. That's really cool. I, didn't, never, I, never, I don't think I ever saw that before. Where's that? Got some pretty cool imagery right here. You know, like, what is that? Deadshot with a skeleton or whatever. Uh, I like these classic kind of like 80s stories. It, it looks like it has the same art. Or similar art to the um, Suicide Squad stories of the time, which is where Deadshot really got popular, and that's a really good series that classic '80s uh, Suicide Squad. So yeah, um, definitely recommend giving this a check out, especially if you like like that kind of gritty '80s DC stuff that was all that was starting to lead into the Dark Age of the '90s or whatever. Um, same thing with, De with you know, same thing with Deathstroke. Deathstroke's early comic book that he had. Solo series was kind of similar in, the, in, the, in their tone and stuff. So there's always good things to check out. But that's all I got for today's video. Thank you guys for checking out my long-winded video. And as always, see you guys later.